<laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> well, if it was who brought more Larry shirts, I would definitely be the favorite. Unfortunately, that's not the case at the moment. But uh, Vishra will definitely get the points for who came the f uh, from the farthest away to attend this. Uh, uh, Vishra is a Philadelphia native, actually. So this was right in his backyard. And uh, But he came from across the world to represent his hometown, which is fantastic. Null uh, coming from California. Uh, do you have any thoughts on what, what you know... Uh, yeah, it's really nice to see players who make these, you know, long treks to a tournament like this, and they're performing well, they're feeling good about it. Let's uh, let's take it to the game and see who's going to come out yeah. 4 now. Let's go straight to business. We're going to go and show you, uh, go straight to the game of Vish and Null, who are uh, going straight at it right now. Okay, so we get into the first series. It's going to be Null on blue versus Vishra on red. And it's going to be Vishra's Bran deck versus Null's Dega. Now, what do you think about Bran? We've seen a lot of crashes this tournament in comparison. We, well, we've seen a little bit of Bran as well. So Bran has been t t uh, usually playing... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Morkvarg and Olgierd, perhaps Ceres here, lots of long ships, Berserker Marauders, maybe some bears. Uh, Croc on the other side has been running the Greatsword. Looks like we're going to see a little bit more of the long ship Corsair kind of Berserker Marauder variant. And Dagon coming in, representing a little bit more Death Wish here with uh, the Cyclops, Griffin, Arcaspore, Dow, and possibly Slizzard, possibly Reconnaissance, uh, possibly Foglets with uh, seeing that Aeromancer slash Vader Maker. So Ooh, I think that uh, Null's running uh, possibly a Novalis list as Novalis. Novalis uh, Dagon tends to gravitate towards running uh, the Mandrake Whispers Tribute. And uh, we're going to see kind of how this all goes here. Yeah. As uh, we see the, the, the Osrel in Null's hand, which is, of course, a fantastic tool in this matchup. And that's what you are very, very happy to see here. And it's going to be Vishra taking the first play. He's going to be uh, developing Zord or perhaps uh, putting the brand down and developing his graveyard. Usually, Bran tends to lead it off kind of traditionally, so uh, I think, um, yeah, I think it's probably going to be Bran, but it's just kind of maybe just looking at the hand, making doing a little bit of long-term planning. Uh, opportunities for Igni, uh, I think, I wonder how, how uh, I mean, having, having, both players have spies in hand, so at least, uh, at least there's going to be some opportunity here. Ooh, and we catch a glimpse of Wolfsbane going into Vicious ah. Graveyard, developing the Olgier, the Morkvark, and the Wolfsbane. This is going to give him a nice surge of tempo in two turns as it goes off swinging for 12. It's going to be on Null how he wants to handle this. It's possible that that tempo could be enough to make him back off. He's playing a little bit slow. Here's the Arcus board to develop and back to Vishra. Yeah, we're going to have the Arcuspore kind of start off that engine. Fog is likely going to be applied as well. A little bit of attrition. The Dagon does really well. Uh, it's going to be managing the uh, Death Wish component of this, trying to brick Griffin, trying to stop Dows. Uh, it's possible. We don't have the deck list in front of us quite yet, and we will in a moment. But as far as Vicious answers to Death Wish, he's going to have to do something about that because the tempo the Death Wish can put, put out can uh, sometimes uh, overtake uh, what is what is very strong deck in Skellige here, uh, being able to drop Berserker Marauders, and uh, an interesting an interesting flavor here. Vicious got a Shieldsmith in hand. Haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, it's a card that actually now that the power level of Bronzes is lower and people are running Nova, I've seen a small amount of experimentation with it, but it's pretty rare. Null's going to go ahead and develop his fog outright, and I think the biggest variable here is how exactly Null wants to handle this Osrel in his hand. He can eat up the Olgird at any time this round, securing 15 and preventing it from coming back, but he could save it for later and try to get a bigger payoff with it even. I think he needs to see a little bit more from Vishra. He hasn't seen a great sword yet. He's not really sure what's going on, but what he does know is that there's no Ceres. So eating up Olgierd isn't so much like a preventative measure of getting hit by Ceres later on in like a short round three, getting blown out with points. So it's possible that a little bit of patience might be exhibited by Null here with Osriel and maybe try to see if there's going to be a great sword or some like really high value target that can be eaten here as we see a strengthening effect already go out on the ship. Yeah. So it looks like Vishra's going to be planning on Corsairs to give him a, lo a lot of points later on. Yeah, I actually really like that Shieldsmith coming down in this capacity. They're called uh, Blacksmiths. Uh, and basically, the idea is not only are you strengthening, you're gaining armor. This is the matchup. You want that in. That armor is giving you full value on your longboat. And even if you res it only once, that Shieldsmith is coming down for 15 points of value, which of course is great for a bronze. 
So uh, no looking for his next play here. The thing about the DAO, the DAO provides so much value uh, later. As you after you apply it, then you can hit it with Griffin. You can hit it with uh, you know Cyclops or Barbagazi perhaps to proc it more than once. But it's really much better if you can afford to play it and stay ahead. So Null may be looking for an opportunity to tempo out and get the DAO out. So it's harder for him to uh, get overtaken here as he is uh, as he is on the red coin. If he's able to really tempo out hard, he may put Vischer in a really tough spot. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the kind of matchup in this round one scenario where the timing on these Silver Spies, the Frightener and the Udalric, if these are to be deployed in round one, the timing on them is going to be absolutely pivotal because tempo is swinging back and forth and both players are just looking to develop a pass. We just saw the Wisp S tribute come out. Mandrick the ship early. I like this play. It's a little cheeky. It prevents that armor from gaining value, but Vischer's going to counter with a boat of his own. Again, getting value out of that armor, turning that cleanly into points with his own boat. Yeah, I mean, Vischer has like a long-term strategy here that, you know, because we haven't seen the deck list in front of us, it's not, it's, it, I'm not really sure if there's great swords involved in this or if there's any sort of, probably not because this is a brand list, but uh, kind of what the, kind of what the late game looks like. We do see Skjall and we can imagine that that's good for Marauders and, uh, you know, likely, uh, well, likely a Marauder of some kind and we can maybe assume that because he held two Marauders in hand, it, it's probably not a Novalist uh, in that he may have another Marauder lurking in his deck. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see that original deck count here, but uh, Null once again uh, pushing here uh, with an 11 point uh, disadvantage here. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and play the Griffin for 13 and get the ping on the ship. And I gotta say, there's actually a lot of focal points in this matchup in these hands. It's not just the Silver Spies. Uh, also, it's gonna be based around whether Null can properly avoid giving that Igni too much value. It's definitely something you have on the mind, because Skellige is one of the few factions that can actually pretty reliably just fit in an Igni very cleanly. It combos very well with their super proactive nature. And as you can see, Null spreading out his arrows. Will be he be able to keep dodging the value? Will his Arcus board perhaps make that difficult for him since it moves randomly? It's true. I mean, you do have Odalrek, and playing Spies uh, does uh, uh, enable Igni. It's uh, not so much a Skellige of old, like back in a movement meta. Igni had so much value in the kind of like when Hailstorm was king. Uh, it, was, it was such a staple in Skellige Igni, but uh, these days you still can get it in there. It's true. Uh, there's, there's a lot of flex in Skellige right now. I think that the archetypes are kind of getting a little bit more fully formed. A lot of it has to do with the longships right now. Uh, as, uh, as the longships continue to, continue to build strength here, um, but uh, ultimately, Vicious probably just kind of establishing and it's saying, my engine's a little bit better than yours, your Fog and Arcaspore won't really match my ships. Plus, the Berserkers are just getting stronger and stronger with each, uh, with each turn that goes through. It looks through like Null wants to play a Cyclops on Arcaspore. He has the ability to kill a ship. We'll have to see what it hits. If it hits the Skell, he is denying value. He hits the shield. Uh, or the, the blacksmith, actually. Uh, that's not going to kill it, but Vishra doesn't care because he doesn't have reses. Now, Vishra does have the option to play out more Marauders from hand. Uh, the Udalric can be dumped at this point. He is within enough points to make it if he does play out the Udalric. And there is a row that's igniable if you Udalric the ranged row that is just into Igni range. He may be considering that now. I love I love the, the play. I like Cyclops on Arcaspore a lot because you can get so much done. You get a removal, plus you get a little bit of extra value on top of the fact that you're dropping an 11 strength body and the aggressive nature of kind of saying okay the Arcaspore has done a lot of work for me his job is done now I'm just going to throw it and take that extra value kind of up front so it's like you kind of advance it four turns on the value that it would get you uh, under the assumption that the round is probably not going to go longer than that uh, or or the possibility that you can maybe slizzard it out in the future not in this situation but being able to do being able to do that with cyclops and be so aggressive with the arcaspore after it's already done so much work for you is such a strong play exactly and he he made sure to kill the ship that he mm -hmm. actually uh hit in terms of its base strength with mandrake to make it a worse res target i'm sure of course doesn't have the res outside of restore uh but it's a cheeky little play nonetheless now vishra in this situation as they play back and forth He's the one with the option to play Udalric because he has the tempo, whereas Null uh, feels much more forced out in terms of his ability to play Frightener particularly. We'll have to see what he does here. It looks like it's the Osral going for the mm -hmm. Old Yard. He's taking it here. Nice, clean 15-point play, denying that from coming back more. So that's no carryover at this point, no Markvarg in this game here. So it is going to be a clean board, no real Barbagazi threat or anything on the monster side. So it is going to be, it's just going to be an empty board going into round two here, which is in a better position for Null since he is on the red coin. And uh, 
from here, I mean, it depends if uh, any spies are going to be developed. Uh, if uh, if Nell is going to go for the fog play to get that last foglet out, just make this a little bit harder, make his engine a little bit stronger yes. compared to Vishra's weakening engine now that one of the ships is gone. I think Nell's probably in a better position here considering he still has Dow Cyclops. Uh, Monster's Nest, whatever you choose to do, is usually, usually a pretty good play on top of it. Uh, so he does have a lot of tempo here. Uh, available, plus the Spy. And you can tell that Nola is hugely cognizant of that Igni there, playing the 15-point Osral in a two, an eventual 24-point row. He knows that Igni is a major threat. He is going to be spacing out and positioning with it very much in mind, but Vishra can always enable it with the Udal Wreck, and that's definitely what his plan is. It comes down to exactly when he wants to do it, though. Now, Nola's in a tough spot here because I think I think uh, the Monster Nest gets him the points that he needs here, but uh, like Aromancer is not fast enough, uh, Cyclops may not be either, uh, and the Dao definitely is not. So uh, unless he wants to be in a position where he goes a card down to take out Vishra, I think that if he really wants to push, he may have to commit the Monster Nest here. Yeah, I think he ha has the option of not necessarily staying ahead. Of course, it is tricky because we do know that the Morkvarg is going to come back as a 2. But without Old Geared, you can stay ahead of that against the Brand variant. You can't play Amazing Tempo immediately. And in addition to that, you have the Frightener. Here's the Monster's Nest playing a little... Oh, it's not aggressive at all. He has the Barbagazzi. He's eating the Dagon and developing carryover of his own. Now, because he ate the Old Geared early, this 6-point carryover will outclass Vishra's in this case. And again, he extremely cognizant cognizant of this Igni. There's the Coral blocking it and shutting out that option completely. So, I mean, you're such a good guy, you didn't correct me at all when I said that it was going to be a clean board going into round two and Morkvark is clearly on the board. Just wanted to <laughs> apologize for that one. I think I, I think I had it in my mind that there was something else that went in, uh, uh, into the graveyard there on the early brand. Morkvark is absolutely on the board and this Barbagazi play was crucial and a great answer here from Coral, kind of keeping this more in favor of Vicious carryover. Yeah, and it looks like Noel is really getting forced out here. I mean, Vishra is developing a lot of points very fast, and he did that with committing some resources. I mean, he is a deck that plays very much for the long round, and he spent all three of his Berserker Marauders already, but he may have earned himself the round, as Noel is quite far behind in points, is in a situation where he doesn't necessarily want to commit to, and he's going for it anyway. Here is the Earth Elemental, aka Dao, and it is Vishra's turn. He takes the pass, giving it to Noel one card down. Noel has the option here. He can play play Cyclops, probably. Uh, you can also take the Aeromancer line if you want. Aeromancer does make the draws a little bit safer, but ultimately it makes your long round a little bit weaker because you're giving that fog up completely. So the fog has done a lot of work in this round and it will likely do more work uh, later on here. Uh, as long as he doesn't mulligan into a foglet or have any problems drawing a foglet, perhaps with Frightener, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, you want to make sure that you at least get that out, uh, out of the deck before you do your draws. Uh, but in this situation, I think he probably is going to be okay. Yeah, the, the Cyclops kill actually could have gone onto the Morkvarg uh, with no Slayer's threat. I don't think there was a specific downside there, uh, but Null is going to take the draw anyway. And he finds Bruess uh, Ritual, which is, of course, a huge amount of value for him. I mean, that is a huge condition that the deck plays for. He still has the Aeromancer, so he still has the Fog and the second Foglet coming out as well with it, presumably. We'll have to see exactly how he wants to play this. He has to make up these two points yeah. because, of course, this... Frightener is going to be met with, <coughs> with an Oodlerick response. It could be a spy spy pass here, but honestly, I think Null playing the Dao and the Griffin is uh, is quite potentially. Oh, he's going to go and he's going to push a little bit here. Yeah, it's such it's you know it's it's a huge amount of tempo and it's it puts you in a position. It puts Fisher in a position where he may actually have to play that extra card to go into an even round three. Yeah, you are very much playing when you're null to get your card back. You need to get your card back when you commit a card down against carryover, especially when it's small carryover attached to a kind of low tempo deck like the Brand variant compared to some like great swords. Uh, you can very easily try to bully them out. And one of the most interesting things about this line of play that's happening is that the Udalric is committed early. This means that Vishra's Igni will be very hard to get off. And as we know, Null is extremely aware of it as a threat. He can very easily play around it now that the Udalric is committed. Vishra makes a pretty big play here with the uh, the restored captain into the Corsair, into the ship, the ship that was not Mandrake, of course. And now Null is looking for an opportunity to either, I mean, he without ex without expending every card left in his hand, I don't even know how he would be able to get ahead here. But, I mean, we see it, right? We see the Igni that may not get full value here. It's possible that, uh, I mean, if Null pushes here, he may actually force all cards out of Vishra's hand. 
Yeah, and I think if null, that is definitely your best line of play. I mean, even if you don't see the Igni, you do have to get ahead in this case, and he has the tempo options to do it. Uh, even with the Arcuspor moving around randomly, it will only put melee to 24 exactly. So even in that case, this Igni is shut out. It's interesting because Haim, uh, Skial has already been played, so Haim's probably biggest tempo play is not uh, available here. So Nell could make, he's going to keep playing. This is this might be a really good read by Nell. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is absolutely his best move. And if he can brick this Igni, if he can punish this, he can either take Vishra to top deck that he might be favorable in, or even better, force him out of more. We'll have to see. But with a five-point gold in your hand, you are not in a great state to push. Now, Vishra, and also the, the Corsair is only looking to resurrect a really weak ship, so Corsair isn't even that good either. The more Null pushes, the more tougher the, tougher the spot Vishra is going to be put in. Yeah, I think Null has the ability to force Vishra into a top deck scenario by forcing him to play out this five point Igni. Of course, if the pass comes down at any time, Vishra will have the ability to mulligan away the Igni. He will gladly do so because it is turned on its head this situation. He is in a situation where the Igni in his hand is his worst enemy. He just wants to see that gone. He knows he's not getting any value out of it. Here's Ooh. the ritual. Here's the Dao and the Arcuspor. He is pushing. Oh, careful about that rope. Good. It's all yeah, about the rope exactly where here. it needs to be right there. And now it looks like he's ready to commit that Griffin too because when he played the Dao, I figured, okay, Griffin for sure. Brew is saved for round three. But instead, it looks like he's going to go pushing all the way through. Yeah, he is read. all in on this. And like I said, the Arcuspor is just cleanly dodging that Igni here. We're going to have to see what Vishra responds to this with. It looks like if everything gets played, we might be going into a top six scenario. It's going to be very tricky for Null to regain this value. At the same time, he does have the 17-point Griffin. He's gaining three points per turn off the back of both Fog and Arcuspor, uh, which, of course, counters Vishra's two points per turn off these long boats. This is tough, right? Uh, Vishra was considering, yeah, he's not looking, uh, reading his body language a little bit. He looks, he think he realizes the spot he's in. He was thinking about even playing the Igni just to play it. Ha -ha, it like he's he's going to have to res this three point to... boat here. The initial plays by Nelk paying dividends here as the Corsair has a very weak start uh, with a three point ship. As the Arcuspor jumps around here, and now it looks like you can really, really push here with the Griffin. I think at this point, you've already said you're going to play that Griffin. It's going to have to come down to the Heim, though. And here's the issue, of course. The Igni value isn't necessarily not going to go off. Uh, if Vishra is able to overcome this with Heim, he will be totally fine. Three boats going off completely counters the Fog and the Arcuspor. He is four points up already. All he needs to do is get effectively 14 points out of this Heim, and he is good to go even with the Igni in hand. We don't have to see top decks in that case. And with a two-card hand being able to mulligan the Igni away, he will emerge victorious. I think Vishra is very favored here. Oh. Hmm. He definitely doesn't want to give Vishra an Igni opportunity. The players don't know the deck list. I mean, these players have been both very busy with their own games. I don't really think any anything has been kind of any information has been given to them. So I don't know if you can put them on Igni. But as you said, Swim, you can put Skellige on Igni often. Yep. And here's Noel uh, beautifully playing around the Igni again. As we can see, if the Heim doesn't make this here, it doesn't matter that the Arcuspor will be moved and enable an Igni on the Seedro because both cards will force out and both players will take the top deck. It comes down to whether this Heim can bridge this gap. If the Heim can bridge the gap, Vishu will take a two card round three and will often be able to force out Null. We're in anticipation here because we don't have the deck list in front of us, so I just kind of want to see what ends up coming out here. He's going to be playing it. He has to play it. As Aeromancer, as an option, that's a clean 13. If he hits it, it should just be enough, I think. Being on the blue player's point of view, sometimes the red players create options we don't get to see. Okay, did, there's went the, oh, Oswald, went the Oswald, a huge swing, and that will be just enough. I think the longboats go off, the fog doesn't tick, Arcuspor is there, and Vishra takes it one card up. He is going to round three, two cards up, and that can show just exactly how two points can make such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That two points on the Morkvarg completely blocking out the dry pass from Null, completely forcing him to play around that he could not win, and Vishra is looking very favored here. Yeah, it's... Definitely going to be, it looks like it's going to be, he has another Shieldsmith there. The Dao is oh, going to not do it. No. That's going to be, you see that, face that is on not good. I mean, he was looking <laughs> for something a little bit spicier than that for sure. There's a couple of gold cards we didn't see there that were available, but ultimately that extra card was already great for Vishra here. He is running the Whale Harpooner. Very nice. Yeah. A little bit of old school because Galaga kind of mixed in here. I got to say, I'm actually a really big fan of Vishra's deck here. He's got something a little original, the Harpooner, the Shieldsmiths, uh, the three boats, and I'm actually really digging this. Of course, the Harpooner giving an 
another target for the res with mm -hmm. these new ones. And Vicious is going to take it up. There it yeah. goes. It also gives, makes Igni even better than it already is. We were talking about how Whale Harpooners make exactly. Igni good, and he actually was running them after all. We do have the deck list in front of us now. As Vicious goes up 1 nothing against Null here, Clash of the Titans already, both players 3 0 in the Swiss. Yeah, keep in mind, these are very, very high stakes at this point. We are late enough in the day. Both of these players have yet to drop a match. One of them is about to in this set. And the one who wins is, of course, very favorable to make it into the top eight. Both these players have already kind of shown that they are... Uh, I mean, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of great plays that Null had made early on that really could put Vischer in a tough spot. The fact that he hit Osreller was able to get, you know, a Heim that was strong enough. It was a huge point there. Uh, Morkvarg basically forcing Null to get to play in there. Null making the decision to actually go in with high tempo plays, which Deathwish is able to execute in round two sometimes. Vischer being able to make it work. Uh, skip his dead cards uh, and also still get through even though with, with the weakened ship, which did look very good there at a mo at, for a moment there with the Mandrake. Yep, so Vishra is going to proceed forward. He His two other decks are going to be a Yan Kalvit and a Band Arrakis Queen, looking at effectively a consume strategy. Uh, or uh, we'll, we'll have to see actually which one actually got banned out. Uh, my apologies, but uh, we'll see here what these players are proceeding mm -hmm. with. Uh, what is Null bringing otherwise? So Null... So Null now has uh, the option to play John, uh, Jan Calvet, which would be uh, the, uh, I believe, it is, yeah, it is, it is a, a, an alchemy list, as, as Jan Calvet tends to be, and also Croc on Crate, uh, bringing the Skellige list as well. We're just going to make sure the players can get connected here, as we're going to go, we're going to go into the second game of this best of three, four round four, but that was a pretty close matchup. We were, uh, we were both, like, leaning, we were really yeah. leaning <laughs> watching that game. It was, uh, it's really good. It's good to see uh, Vischer compete again. It's been a long time. He's still wearing his Challenger jacket from 20, yeah. from 20, from way back in May, uh, and he also has his Challenger ring on as well, if you can tell on his camera. <laughs> he's, yeah. got, he's got some nice A lot of people uh, might not remember back in the day, but Vishra was one of the top eight to make it to the live first Gwent challenger we go into the second game it's gonna be Null's alchemy deck versus vicious alchemy deck no oh. went ahead and banned out <laughs> the uh consume deck by vicious so vicious just needs to win one of these next two games with his alchemy deck right before this match started i was talking to vishra as he won his round three game and he was saying boy alchemy mirrors are funny and it looks like we're gonna get to see how funny they are <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's absolutely right so it looks like Null has a bit of an interesting one here the vico Vol Aro Medic in mm -hmm. the Alchemy deck, which a couple of players are running, but definitely isn't the most common choice. He also has the Rain Farn with Yoakim. That's going to be able to pull out his Cantarella nice and early, and Visha doesn't necessarily have reliable access to his own. It's true. It's also in the mirror here. The Vico Varo Medic can pluck the uh, Viper Witchers out of Visha's graveyard, so he can't yes. win them, stuff, this which is, is going to be a huge counter. Yeah, the Vico Varo Medics are effectively mirror attacks. I really like the look of Null's deck for this one. I think that um, also we weren't able to see what Skellen put on top of the deck. Kahir is already there, uh, which is probably, you know, it's a pretty good choice here. And Calvit is usually, uh, you know, you buff up Calvit, you play Kahir for a huge round three play, uh, bringing a giant uh, Calvit back up, maybe grabbing uh, Villager Forts or grabbing, you know, something else that's able to source Ooh, a Viper Witcher. Viper Witcher. That's nine damage. It's not going to kill Skellen, but it actually does matter. It leaves Vishra the option to play Vico Varo Novice uh, to play out the ale because he has two units developed on different rows. So we know Null's Viper Witchers are dealing nine. Now, depending on Vishra's composition, they could be dealing equal or more. Uh, and Vishra does have the Black Blood in hand. Now, the Black Blood is something that you do see these alchemy lists run on occasion. It actually has some pretty good grabs. I think one of the biggest variables here is seeing what the Black Blood pulls, seeing what, of course, the Runestone pulls as well. I think Vishra's got a ten, uh, the 10 point ping on the Viper Witchers, three ointments, three ales, one Petri's filter which is uh, an interesting addition on top of the, uh, the Black Blood, uh, the Runestone, and the Mandrake. So we see Vishra play the Kalvit out for the Mandrake, uh, buffing that up immediately, having himself the option to Kahir the Kalvit later. I like this play. We're going to see the Slave Driver coming off from Null. He has options available. Here's the Novice. He's going to find an Ale with it. There it is. So he's able to keep up with a lot of tempo here, only seven points below Vishra. After Vishra has committed two golds and mm -hmm. a leader. Yeah, and Roach as well on top of that coming out. And it's, it's really great that, uh, you know, the, the Slave Driver can make so much use 
of the opponent's cards because you are also running the alchemy deck. So this is kind of where the funny situation comes with the alchemy merit because you have basically twice as many resources in some situations. With slave drivers, also the Vicovara medics are making it even sweeter for Yeah, me. exactly. Vicovara medics are almost like a fourth and a fifth slave driver here, actually. And of course, you know this foul ale is going to be enabled because your opponent is playing into patterns that enables their own ale. There's the Mandrake, which is probably not... I mean, it's interesting. You it's you can afford to play the Mandrake if you really... And not that this is the situation where you'd want to, but unless you really wanted to weaken Calvit, but you can afford to play it. Vesemir has so many other targets. Uh, but if you wanted to maybe delete a Viper Witcher, perhaps... Uh, or make is a very low tempo play, and I think that's what low. Noel's sitting on here. I mean, normally you pick it, but it, it, it might just be a little too low for this case. Noel's going to go ahead and ale, and it looks like he's trying to surge ahead of Vistra. Now, as Joe and I mentioned before, if you can get to a point where your opponent plays something maybe just a little bit slow, a single turn out of line, then you can surge ahead in tempo. And if you make that, and if you commit to that and stay ahead every turn after that, you can force someone out if the coin flip is on your side. So Vishra has to be a little careful here because if he does play something a little too slow, it's punishable. He's very, very aware of this. He's thinking. It's interesting to know when, uh, when Nell might commit the expired ale because if the expired exactly. ale comes out and kills the Viper Witcher, he can steal one right away. That's exactly right. And particularly, it's a very high tempo play as well. Right now, it represents 16. That's a 17-point mm. ale, not quite enough to catch up. He needs a 20 if he does want to try to bully out. Rain Fam into Yokim would have done that, but the Yokim, of course, being present in the hand disallows that. And it's going to be Null to decide what to do. He's not in a position where he can get ahead of Vishra yet. Vishra is standing his is ground, making sure Null cannot catch up to him in this way. Null is also running Roach, in, in case you're curious, uh, as far as uh, we've already seen the Roach. And these are very similar decks. Uh, there are some slight differences. I think the biggest one being the Medic, um, that is the biggest one. And the two Medics, uh, Null doesn't have a third Medic. He does have both Medics in hand. So he's probably looking to grab a Viper Witcher. It's the most important thing. It just, it hurts Vicher so much, but Vicher is able to source the extra Vi uh, the Viper Witchers through his own Slave Drivers on top of that. So it's wonder I wonder if it's going to end up being a wash in that regard. Ooh, here's a potentially also really big tempo swing coming up by Null. Here's the Yoakim mm -hmm. pulling the Viper Witcher. Huge tempo, and he yeah. can smash whatever he wants. There's the Kelvite, and now they're on even. Again, it comes down to tempo here. Vishra knows, he knows he's at a major risk. If he plays something too slow he can pass or he can try to beat that tempo again if they get within five if Vishra plays something a little too slow Null not only has the option to get ahead of him but he can also play rain Farn with roach into cantarella and then threaten the ale to catch up there as well and that's very very scary so Vishra's gonna have to play some serious tempo here i don't think i think i may have just missed what card dropped here We only can see the... Yeah, oh, it's, it's, the, slave oh, it's the slave slave driver. So Vishra's going to find the Vicovara ah, medic, and that's yes. valuable information. We saw him write that down. Ah, so he even emoted a little bit, too. Like, <laughs> hey, okay, okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's an emote out of respect there. The Vicovara medic's a little bit of a smile on his face, and he knows that that's a pretty favorable tech there. It's a bit of a cheeky one. Uh, now, Null does have the option for the ale, but both players are playing for very there much tempo. Is. Here it goes, and that's going to keep them nice about on even. Null being one point short. Vishra has the pass whenever he wants, but I think he's going to stand his ground here. He may. He may. I think it's great that like it really seems like both players are playing with a kind of an amalgamation of each other's decks. Like It really can go any given way. Like it, it, There's differences between the decks, but those players have access to those differences through stuff like the Vicovaro and the Slave Driver, especially when the Slave Driver can pull the Vicovaro Medic and use the tactic against uh, himself here with Null. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're looking at two extremely different Alchemy Nilfgaard decks. While this is a mirror, both decks are different in a lot of different ways. We see Rain Farm, Yoakim, uh, uh, and, uh, of course, the Vico Medics on one side, and Vishra with, like, the double create silver options with the Mandrake and Kahir. And the Black Blood also is, uh, is a difference. And I wonder, like, what's the best scenario for your Black Blood and an Alchemy Mirror in this case? Uh, you have a few options. There's not really anything amazing to munch on with Osral, as it were, and you're not really going to populate uh, a graveyard enough for something like a Grave Hag, but you can always gain good value with something like a uh, Water Hag mm -hmm. into a Arrakis Venom, for example. Uh, I don't think there's a single outstanding option you're really going to want for it, though. I mean, Slave Drivers do create an, an extra stacked graveyard, usually. I mean, that's, that's kind of like, you know, one fun option you can get from Black Blood. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, usually like using it as kind of an emergency weather clear in some matchups, but in this matchup, oh, yeah, there's nothing no that really... It. There Here it is. is. But he doesn't have a big enough target to hit to stay ahead. It's going to maintain this tempo balance. Both players realize exactly how important this tempo is. Both players, Vishra is aggressively defending his option to stay ahead and Noel is pushing him hard. Both players every turn, Vishra is able to stay ahead by one point and Noel is so close to being able to overcome it. It's so interesting how, uh, how when two control decks kind of get together, it's really about the board state on how strong your control options really are. We saw the Viper Witcher not really reach max value Ooh. because of the board. And there goes the Seer. Did you catch what Shuffling happened? Shuffling back both Roach and Yoakim. The Yoakim that Null played and killed. That is a cheeky, cheeky shuffle. So Vishra now has Null's Yoakim in his deck. He doesn't have a way to pull it, except with something like Kahir into Calvi later. That could be a huge finisher potential. That would be huge. I mean, Yoakim, it's it's so good. Like it's just there's it's just a mashup of the two decks against each other. And here comes the pass. Looks like on even cards, Null's gonna take his exit. Well, my Null, apologies, Null, he's Null up a card. He's up a card. Up, yes. my, my apologies. Okay. So uh, we have the potential to go to round three on even. Uh, Vishra is going to be taking round one. He has the option for the dry pass. He has the option to push this out. He has the Kahir developed. And of course, he can res the Calvite. If he finds that Yoakim off that as well, he is playing Kahir. He's playing Roach. He's playing his 11 point Calvite. And he's playing Yoakim. And he's playing whatever that pulls. That would be an insane finisher. So many. That would be fireworks for sure. That would be that would be exactly the dream scenario uh, with that right there. I think it's so good that he put the Yoakim back in the deck. That's uh, there's just so many potential options here. He's going to go ahead and he's going to pass here. Nell is going to have to play the card and then play again. Last say going to Vishra. Yeah, Vishra does have to mulligan the Roach, although I don't think there's anything else in this deck he really doesn't want. Null is going to go ahead and play the Novice, decline the ability mm -hmm. to pull an AL out of his deck. A nice little play there. Uh, and it's going to come down to what these players are. We're going to go to an even card round three. Null has the first play, Vishra has the last. Skellin, not as valuable as it... Well, actually, with K here, sorry, it is, it is very good. <laughs> We're going to so. see the Runestone Mulligan. He finds the Mandrake. Now, the Mandrake is a card that could potentially find value here. Uh, Vishra and Ale decks in general will be buffing up pretty high, and there is the Yoakim potential mm -hmm. as well. That being said, Vishra has last play. So if the Yoakim comes out on that last play, there is no Mandrake option to reset it. I think this Mandrake, and whether it can find value or not, is actually going to be a very major decider for this round. This is pretty big. Vesmir going to go to the top with the buff. Roach is coming out here for Null as that is the first gold that he's played. And now Kahir into Calvit does pull Vesemir guaranteed. Vesemir has a number of options, of course, because it's an alchemy deck. You see, but he's able to tutor uh, probably one of the ales that still remain uh, in the deck as well. Who do you think is favored in this round three? This is very close. Well, there's a lot of wild cards in Vishra's saying He's got the Runestone, he's got the Black Blood, so it really could be anything. But like we said before, the, the Black Blood, nothing too outstanding. Uh, the Runestone, I mean, could be anything, really. It could get bricked completely. He could end up getting, you know, something... Really, it could be anything. anything. Uh, and there's the slave driver into the medic again. Into another slave oh, yeah. driver. Tons of bodies. <laughs> Vish has oh, got a smile on his face. Uh, <laughs> there's another, another Pico. <laughs> there's the novice. novice. <laughs> <laughs> and he's chained <laughs> out. Here's the yeah. ointment. He's not done yet. He's <laughs> laughing. There's the driver. What does he find the medic? Another Pico. He's not done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's man. the Viper Witcher. What <laughs> a sequence. <laughs> a total of eight cards in one turn. And he is just hysterical. V Vishra is just basically, you know, I said, he said that, he said that alchemy, uh, <laughs> alchemy mirrors are funny and here we are. <laughs> Hysterical. So good. Uh, and now Vishra is going to have to try to play the Yoakim as late as possible to, you know, effectively dodge Mandrake. Mandrake is one of the key things you look out for in alchemy because these decks very typically run it. The problem therein is though, uh, his two ways of pulling it, both Vilgefortz and Kahir for Calvite, are not necessarily something that he can afford to play last because they're a little random. I mean, if you mm -hmm. uh, Kahir for Calvite and see Yoakim as the third option, you kind of have to choose it there so you can get it ever at all. And we'll have to see if that gets met with a Mandrake. However, Vishra looks like he's in a very favorable position here. No Viper Witchers left in the graveyard for ointments at this point. Mahaka Mail is going to be coming out to uh, now that the rows have been established for Null. But he does still have, uh, he does not have the Vico Vara Medic, so he can still probably source, there we can see in Vicious Graveyard, two Viper Medic, uh, Viper Medics, Viper Witchers in there. It's really going to be how much value is going to get, how much value is he going to get out of the Mandrake? 
Uh, and what is he going to be doing with Rain Farm? Well, the Rain Farm has to pull the Cantarella in this case, At which this is point, yeah. not necessarily what you want to see in round three. That being said, it's still a positive point play uh, overall. It's a little low, but really it comes down to this Mandrake. So that Black Blood pulling out an Ekimara, it's not necessarily amazing value, but it's definitely in an acceptable range, and it still counts as an alchemy card for your uh, collection. There's the Cantarella coming out here. He has the option for the Vesemir. Mm -hmm. He takes it, of course, and it's going to be four cards to four cards, but Fishra, of course, has an 18-point lead here. Yeah, it's a pretty big lead, and we know that cat here is going to be absolutely massive, and the more thinning that's able to get done here for Vishra, uh, not that there's a lot of other opportunities here, but uh, just increases the chance that Cat here and Vildreforts are going to pull something like Joachim, which is going to be a massive play. And now that Vesemir is uh, up to the plate here, all buffed up, that's going to be a huge play here for Null. Cat here is going to be a pretty huge play. And uh, now that there's actually points on the board with Cantarella, you'd be able to get full value from a Viper Witcher plucked out of Vicious Graveyard as well. Uh, and then ultimately maybe ice some sort of buff here as Kaher comes down with Roach. Roach again. Here's the 11 point Calvite. He's looking at his options. Uh, he could have Joachim, but even if he sees it, unless it's the third slot, you can take it with Vilgforts. Here's the Kahir mm -hmm. and onto a nice clean Petri's filter. Huge value, asserting a huge amount of dominance. He is almost 50 points ahead head here and only one card down. I don't know if Null can come back from this one. So much work to do for Null, a real hill to climb here. I mean, you can try your best. I mean, at this point, you just have to play out everything you can possibly do. Viper Witcher is being the best possible play for Vico Vara Medic. I think an Ale is the best play for Vesemir at this point. Kehir would just hope to find something worthwhile in the Mandrake. It's going to be okay, but okay is not going to be good enough for Null. Yeah, it's just such an uphill climb here. I mean, it looks like Vishra is gearing up towards a very clean 2-0. I'm still excited to see what <laughs> if this Joachim gets to be played, if we're going to see... <laughs> like, I mean, like, Vishra's, like, not even halfway there, I think. Like, he still has yeah, so exactly. much he can he do. He still has the Runestone. That's a huge variable. He still has the Vilgaforts to pull out on a Vikovara Medic. And keep in mind, if Vishra saw the Joachim as anything other than his third option, he doesn't take it because he knows to play around Mandrake. He knows that he wants to play as late as possible, and if his Joachim is on the top now, mm -hmm. which it would have been in the first two options, his Vilgefortz has the option to pull that out whenever he wants. No, just kind of going through the motions here. Probably just going to hold on to Mandrake till the bitter end to get the most value he possibly can get out of it. Uh, oh, Runestone is still available here. Ooh. Interesting. Can he you... does have Gate. Does he have... Can Fringilla do something here? Slave Drivers in... Nothing uh, really great. Not an amazing Fringilla here. No. If he has a Slave Driver left in his deck, he can gate it out, and that will be his best option. He looks kind of inclined towards it. If that's not his best option, he can try uh, something like an Albrick or a Fringilla, but neither of them is going to give him great value there. Not think, a fantastic runestone for him. I don't him. think the gate gets him anything either, right? I don't think he has any officers worth pulling at this point. If he's used all of his Slave Drivers, then he does not. So he's going to go for Albrecht He takes the Albrecht. Yeah. I think that was his best option as he is out of Slave Driver. Which is going to go ahead and top deck a Viper Witcher, uh, which is something that he's not unhappy about at all. And we see Null here being 24 points behind. Talk about an uphill climb. I think um, I think this kind of uh, concludes the Yo uh, Yohim is not uh, wasn't on the top three cards yes. uh, at this point. As he's going to get full value for the Viper Witcher, 15 points. Looking a little grim here for Null at this point. Here's the Kahir onto Calvite. Now, he does have other options. Here's the Slave Driver. He did actually have one more. Here's the Viper Witcher. He can pull it out and he can deal some damage, but it's going to be really, really hard to make this up. The Vilgefortz is still a major, major threat, and I just don't know if this point difference can be done. Especially considering that the, the, Runestone, is, the Runestone is just kind of feels like extra points at this point. Exactly. It might not even find itself being necessary here. Keep in mind that we are uh, viewing two of the six players that is effectively 3-0 and o right now. We saw the Viper Witcher actually kill Null's own Slave Driver to give an ointment target, which is uh, ultimately going to get more value than, than just the nine damage I think that it can already be applied, because it's likely going to source another Viper Witcher. Uh, just an interesting line of play there. I mean, he had to do it. There really is nothing else. The ointment is otherwise dead. So I think he just had to, he had to put something in his graveyard there that can be rezzed. 
I Otherwise, think that's right. We're if that's seeing, not incorrect, if that's not correct, then we're I measure seeing Vishra's runestone here. It could pull any silver. Hefty Helga is not that bad. Uh, there's something like Katarine Venom, which doesn't really have enough birth here to find value. Could be a lot of silver. Is not a great board state for something like Peter. Mm -hmm. I think he's filtered through all three of his slave drivers, so I do not think his own Nilf Guardian Gate is an option, but he does have the Yokim still in deck. If he sees Gate here, he has it. Oh, that's actually really... Here's oh, the he got the he Gate for it. the Yokim. Yo here we go. as an officer pulling out his tutor or his... <laughs> the Kovaro Novice on 12 into a huge chain. Oh, Yoki Meg, Null's seen enough. pass coming up by Null. Vitra with the 2-0 victory. He's going to go on 4-0, offering Null his first defeat in the series. And what a great feature match for round four. We're starting to see, we're starting to see the skill on display a little bit more and more <laughs> as we get deeper and deeper into the high win category on the Swiss. Great series, no, I mean, <laughs> great series for Null and Vishra, and that was an awesome mirror. I think that we found out why those that, why those mirrors are so ridiculous. Yeah, I gotta say that was very very clean play all around, and I'm interesting to see. I'm interested to see more out of Vishra. He seems to have brought a relatively irregular lineup, mm -hmm. uh, alchemy notwithstanding. I hope that we see some of his consume later in the tournament mm -hmm. as well, because that's a very interesting deck that uh, has gotten banned out in this set, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there's still lots to see. There's still lots of players that we're gonna get to showcase on the feature stage and ultimately get into the 